The four distributions below are all normal distributions with mean 108, but different standard deviations. Order the distributions by standard deviation from least to greatest, where one has the smallest standard deviation and four has the greatest standard deviation. For a normal distribution, the standard deviation describes the variation or spread of the data values around the mean. The larger the standard deviation, the larger the spread or larger variation around the mean. The standard deviation is commonly represented by the lowercase Greek letter sigma. Looking at the four graphs, notice how all of the horizontal axes are the same, but the vertical axes are different, which indicate the relative frequency. To better understand how the standard deviation affects the graph of a normal distribution, let's look at an animation. As an example here, I have a normal distribution set up where the mean is 80, and the standard deviation is A, where I have a slider for A that takes on the values from A equals one to A equals five. Let's see how the graph changes as A, or the standard deviation, increases from one to five. Notice as the standard deviation increases, the spread increases, meaning more and more values are further away from the mean as the standard deviation increases. Let's take a look at that again. As the standard deviation increases, the spread or variation from the mean increases. Going back to our problem, Again, we're told to order the graphs by standard deviation from least to greatest, which would be the same as ordering the graphs by their spread or variation from the mean from least to greatest. So the graph that has the least spread or least variation from the mean has the least standard deviation, which would be this graph here in the lower left-hand corner. We label this one. Looking at the remaining three graphs, we want to determine which of these three graphs have the least spread which would have the next smallest standard deviation, which would be this graph here in the lower right-hand corner. Now looking at just the top two graphs, again, we're looking for the graph that has the least spread or least variation from the mean, because it would have the next least standard deviation, which would be the graph here in the upper left-hand corner, leaving us with this last graph in the upper right-hand corner that has the most spread or the greatest standard deviation. I hope you found this helpful.